Good morning, family. Uh, we are already on Tuesday morning, and uh, we're devotional. It's going to pick up right where we left off on uh, yesterday. We're focusing on being disciples on a mission or with a mission to love. And on Monday, the challenge was to appreciate fundamentally um, some of the requisites of love as disciples. If we are following God, um, the Father, and, and following God, the Son, then, then we follow them according to the teaching that they've given us. God loved, John 3, 16. He loved, Jesus loved, John 15 and verse number nine. We are followers of God, so we love. And loving has nothing to do with how we feel about it. It has everything to do with making the decision, making the choice to follow God. So your challenge on yesterday was to make the decision to love. Then number two, it was to remember the restrictions of love. And number three, to honor the conditions of love. And I pray that that challenge uh, was effective for you. I pray that you took some time and, and really conscientiously made application of those things. I want to go a little bit further on today and um, and look at the um, look at the reality that the, the in studying love, uh, we have to be a people who love God with our all. This is going to be our Tuesday focus. So not only should we make the decision to love, but we ought to love God with everything. We ought to love him with our all. And there are two passages I want to keep in your spirit uh, on today. I hope that you read the text on yesterday, John 3, 16, uh, John 13, 14, and 15, and took some time and looked at all those passages that talked about love. And we're going to look at those a little bit later in the week. But two texts we want to uh, bring to your attention and they're both mentioned uh, out of this one passage. Well, well, we'll get the connection out of one passage. In Matthew 22 and uh, verse 34, the Bible says, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. Jesus quotes part of the Shema, um, which is Hebrew for hears, and, and, um, and it teaches us out of Deuteronomy chapter 6. That's where that quote comes from. Deuteronomy 6, verse 1 through 5, really, but 4 and 5 is where he keys in on and that teaches us that God is instructing us out of that text to love him back the way that he has loved us. And when you, when you look at that text, especially from Deuteronomy uh, into Matthew, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, uh, all your strength, or all your mind. Those are the two um, variations in that text. And it's a translation struggle. And we'll see that in just a minute. But it's not a list of how to love God with human faculty. That's really not the point. The, the, uh, the strength of the text is teaching us that we ought to love God completely, love him comprehensively, love God like he loved us, like Christ loved us with his all, like God loved us completely. That's how God wants us to respond to him in love. And really, that's that's one of the conditions of a disciple being a lover. If I'm going to love like God loves, then I, I need to love God completely. God shouldn't have part of my love. He shouldn't have uh, only certain allocated areas of love. If I'm going to love, I'm going to love God the way he loved me. And that's completely. I love how the context in verses in, in Deuteronomy and in Matthew both um, are, are testing context. In Deuteronomy, of course, God has just brought them out of some things and, and they, are, they are being, uh, they are under trial to reciprocate the love of their deliverer uh, that he's just shown to them. And then in Matthew, Jesus is now being tested. You saw the lawyer. He's being tested to try to be tricked up by the Pharisees. And in both cases, we don't want to be pharisaical in the way that we approach God. You don't want to try to 
come to God to see how far or what you can get away with. The right mentality for a disciple is to begin with the notion that I'm all in with you, God. I'm, you've got everything that I have. Now, if you are all in with God, then you're going to love him the way he deserves to be loved. And that's completely just love him back the way he loved you. He loved you completely and we ought to love him completely. Notice just a couple of reasons. When you when you go back and spend some time reading through Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 5, there are at least three things that you want to have in your mind that I'm loving him, number one, because he has healed and delivered me. Why would I love God completely? Why would I love him with my all? Because he's healed and delivered me. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, that's exactly what he's done with the nation of Israel. He's brought them out of slavery. He's liberated them from being under uh, Egyptian persecution. And, and he's delivered them from captivity, taking them into promise, which helps you with number two. I'm not only loving him completely because he's healed and delivered, but I'm loving him completely because he is the hope of my destiny. God is the, the answer. My love for him in that passage teaches us that it's the key to long life and prosperity. When God has all of me, when God has uh, my complete submission to him and my surrender to him, that agreement to love God back the way God has loved me uh, opens the door for God to, to grant you covenant prosperity. When you are in agreement with God, God said, I'll make everything about you blessed. So I'm going to love him. Love him because he's the hope of your destiny. But not only did he heal and deliver, not only is he the hope of your destiny, but my love for God honors the devotion that he showed to me. When I love God properly, I'm not only saying to him, you are my God, but I'm saying I want to love you the way that you love me. He first loved us, Deuteronomy 6 four through five is not the first episode of God's love. Really, it's creation. But then he's going to echo that when the coming of Christ comes and Jesus comes into the world. And, and, and that's a picture of God so loving all of humanity that he gave his best. He gave his only begotten son. So I'm loving God. I'm honoring the devotion that God has shown uh, to me. Now, here's your challenge. It's Tuesday. When you package all this together, what does it look like? What does complete devotion to God look like? It means that if I'm comprehensively loving God, if God has every part of me, then my innermost person, my heart, belongs to God. My, 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 the deepest part of who I am, the quintessence of who I am, belongs to God. And I am agreeing, I'm making the decision to surrender to you to give you my all, to show love completely to you, implicitly to you. You have my heart. Not only do you have my innermost person, but you've got my deepest emotions. I want to love God with my emotion. I want God to not only be the target of my every emotion, but I want to make sure that my every emotion is surrendering to him, that it is, it is decidedly yours. But not only do, do I love you with my innermost person and my deepest emotion, but I'm loving you with all of my strength, all of my energy, and all of my intellect, my might and my mind. And both of those capture that, that translation struggle, which really just says, God, you've got all of my everything. You've got all of my heart. You've got all of my soul. You've got all of my might. You've got all of my mind. You've got everything that makes me who I am. That's your challenge. This is your challenge. Your challenge is to practice loving God with your all. Today and, and for the rest of your days, if you're going to follow him, give him your all. Love him with your all. Now, here's what's going to be awesome. The more you practice loving God with your all, the easier it will be to love your fellow man. As disciples, let's make Tuesday an awesome day to love God back and let's practice following him, loving him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our might, all of our mind. Let's give him our everything. He's worthy and he did it first for us. I'm gonna pray for you. You do the same for me. Let's love better.